59 is the answer. Good job. Adwed, you must not be having a book in your hand, no, to write. Okay. Terence, switch on the camera. Okay, okay. All right. So, children, what they have said, the following observations have been arranged in the ascending order. So, very in advance, they have told you that the data is arranged in the ascending order. They are telling you if the median of these observations is 58, find the value of x. So, the data which is written here, 24, 27, 43, 48, x minus 1, x plus 3, 68, 73, then 80, and then 90. The median, the median value for this arrangement of data is how much? 58. So I'll write here m is equal to 58. Let us first, first of all figure out how many observations are given to us. How many observations? I think it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Total 10 observations are there. So the number of observations is an even number, right? The number of observations is what? Even number. So when the number of observations is even, how do we get the median value? How do we get the median value? The median value will be n by 2 the term plus n by 2 plus 1 the term whole divided by 2. This is how we find the median. So this is going to be 10 by 2, which is 5. So fifth the term plus 5 by 10 by 2 plus 1. That is equal to the sixth the term whole divided by 2. Okay. Now what is the fifth term, children? One, two, three, four, five. This is the fifth term, and this is the sixth term, x minus one and x plus three. So how will you solve this? Median value is how much? It was given to us, 58. So the left-hand side can be filled with 58. Now what is the fifth term? x minus one. So I'll write here, x minus one plus. What is the sixth term? It is x plus three, and then whole divided by two, right? x minus 1 plus x plus 3 whole divided by 2. Now, this is looking like a pure linear equation, isn't it? A linear equation which is defined in only one variable x. So, children, 2 will get multiplied to the left-hand side. You will get 116, which is equal to x plus x, which is equal to what? 2x. Minus 1 plus 3 is what? 2. So, now, bring this 2 from the right to the left-hand side you end up getting 116 minus 2, which is equal to 2x. So 116 minus 2 is 114. That is equal to 2x. Therefore, x is equal to 114 divided by 2. And that is equal to 57. This is your answer. Good job. Aaron, Adwit, understood? Then uh, parents, Namrata, did you solve it? Yes, sir. Do the sum, children. This is based on average. Okay, this is not based on median. This is based on mean or average. Children, they are telling you 
that the mean of 10 numbers is 24. If one number is included, that means you know you are adding one more number to the given set of observations. The new mean is equal to what? 25. They are asking you find the included number. Okay. Uh, how many numbers are there? 10 numbers are there, isn't it? So children, you remember the formula which I taught you in the beginning, x bar is equal to, Terence, keep the camera on, x bar is equal to sigma x i divided by the number of observations, isn't it? Now, we don't know how much, sorry, we know how much is the average of these 10 numbers is given to you. We know how much is the average of these 10 numbers. It is given to you as 24, which is equal to sigma xi. But we don't know what is the sum of all these observations. So I'm writing sigma xi as it is, divided by, divided by the number of observations, which is 10. So children, this would imply that the sum of all the 10 observations would be 240, sorry, 24, sorry, 24 into 24 into 10, that is equal to 240, right? If you take the sum of all the 10 observations, like x1 plus x2 plus xb plus x4 till x10, you would have got 240 as the sum of all the observations. Now, what is happening, you know, to the sum of all these observations, you are adding one more extra observation. See this, one number is included. So let me assume that the number which you are including is x11. Isn't it? There were numbers till x10. Now to that, to those 10 observations, if you're adding one more observation to it, then you can assume that the value which you're adding to the existing number of observations is x11. Okay. So children, sigma xi, sigma xi stands for what? The first 10 terms. Huh? Sigma xi for the first 10 terms plus, children remember, plus you are adding the 11th term, okay? You're adding the 11th term or the extra one term, whole divided by. Children, originally how many terms were there? 10 terms were there, huh? Plus you are adding the 11th term. So total how many terms will be there in the new scenario? Original 10 plus one more extra, which is equal to 11, isn't it? And they are asking you how much would be the new average. How much would be the new average? This is Sir, they have given us the average. We just so need to find that. They are, oh, achha, the new mean is 25. Okay, that is already given to you. That's a good news. So we will use that. They have already given the new. Average is going to be how much? 25. I will add it over here. Aaron, everyone, it's clear. Terence, Namrata. The sum of all the 10 terms plus that 11th term, whole divided by 11 is equal to what? 25. Okay. Sigma. So, uh, yes. Uh, so if they don't, uh, if they ask us to find the mean of uh, when they include a number, so will they give the value of the included number? And then in that case, they will have to give x11. No. Otherwise, how will you find the new average? Isn't it? Yeah. So now, children. Sigma xi for the first 10 terms that you already found, 240 plus x11 is something which you don't know. Huh? So 240 plus x11 divided by 11 is equal to 25. So children, 240 plus x11 is equal to, you will cross multiply 11 to the right hand side. So 25 into 11 is what? 275. Therefore, x11 is equal to 275. You bring that 240 to the right-hand side, becomes minus 240. So how much is 275 minus 240? It is 35. So the 11th observation which you're adding as extra is what? 35. Is this mode of calculation easy for you children? Huh? Rather than writing x1 plus x2 plus x3 till x11 and then solving it, uh, no need. You understood the concept. The sum of the first 10 observations plus the 11th observation whole divided by the total number of new observations, which is 11, will give you the new mean, which is 25. Isn't it? So this is how you solve it. If there is any doubt, please ask me right away. 
you know children this is the first time that i applied this method because when i was doing sums from the first exercise for arithmetic mean i never touched upon this method there we were doing everything manually everything was manual isn't it but here i directly applied the formula so this will save a lot of time animesh aaron is it clear terence it's clear no fine we'll do one more sum okay this Try solving this interesting one. See this. Find the mean and median of the data. Anyways, to find mean, you don't have to arrange this data in ascending order, isn't it? So sigma x sorry x bar will be equal to um, the sum of all the observations. That is thirty five plus forty eight plus ninety two plus seventy six. Plus sixty four, plus fifty two, plus fifty one, plus sixty three, plus seventy one, all divided by. And how many observations are here? If you count it, four five. I think it is nine, right? Is it nine anyways? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, what is the sum of all these observations? Anyways, you must have already done it. Sir, five hundred and fifty two. Five hundred and fifty-two divided by nine. You just need to divide it. So I think it is nine six are fifty-four. Balance one nine ones are nine. Balance three nine three is twenty-seven. Then um, so again three will come as balance. Again three will come. No, so I think you can just put one decimal place and wrap it up. This is more than enough. Do we need to round it off? No need to round it off. Whatever decimal value you get, you just place it. Okay, and just place one decimal figure. That is enough. Okay, very good, Namrata. Now let us find what is the median value. For finding median value, you should first of all arrange the given observation in ascending order, right? Let's do it. Uh, thirty-five, forty-eight. So which is the first number? Thirty-five, I think. Isn't it? That is the lowest number. Then after thirty-five comes. Uh, 48? 48. Yeah. 48. Then after 48, 51. 51. All right. Then comes 52. 52. After 52 comes 52. 63. Yeah, 63. Then comes. Uh, 64. Uh, uh, after 63 comes 64. Then after 64 comes 71. After 71, 76. After seventy six, ninety two. All right. So all the nine observations have been arranged. Now they are not asking us to find the median value out of this. Remember, children, they have given us some condition to be followed. What is it? If fifty one is replaced by sixty six, this fifty one, okay? This fifty one is replaced by sixty six. What will be the new median? So fifty one is re. Just a minute, huh? Just a minute. If fifty one is replaced with sixty six, don't you feel this will be the new arrangement of data thirty five forty eight? Fifty one is no more existing, isn't it? So instead of fifty one, you will arrange sixty six. But after forty eight, I cannot write sixty six because the number which is coming after fifty one was what fifty two, isn't it? So first I cannot write sixty six and then fifty two. So I have to be a little careful at this point. So first I'll write fifty two, then I'll write sixty three, then I'll write sixty four, and then I will write sixty six because the number sixty six is greater when compared to fifty two, sixty three, and sixty four, isn't it? Now after writing sixty six, you can write down the remaining three numbers 
which is 71, 76, and 92. Okay. Now find the uh, median value. Anyways, you were having some question, no? What was it? So they told us to find the first, first the whole uh, median, right? Before replacing. And then they so, told us to find the Okay, in that case, you know, you can easily find the median value, the fifth observation. It would have been 63. Isn't it? If you are asked to find the median value without any changes, then 63 is the median value. Now, what is the median value? I think it is 64. Isn't it? How did I find the answer, children? N is equal to what? Nine. Because nine observations are there. Nine is what? An odd number. And I told you, when n is equal to an sorry, when n is an odd number, the median value will be n plus one divided by two term, and that is equal to nine plus one by two the term, which is equal to fifth term, right? The fifth term. So the fifth term is what sixty four. Very good. Easy. An image very good. Namrata very good. What about Aaron? Terence, Terence is in a more than answer. He Okay, Aaron, keep the camera on. Uh, the mean weight of 60 students in a class of, in a class is 40. The mean weight of boys is 50 kg while that of girls is 30. Find the number of boys and girls in the class. Okay. I'll do one thing. I'll just assume there are n number of boys and m number of girls. Okay, no problem in doing this. No, I'm assuming that there are n number of boys and m number of girls in the class. So, so what will uh, yes, Animesh? Uh, if there are m number of boys, uh, boys, then the number of girls will be 60 minus m, right? I'm just assuming it. Now later on, you know, we can use that concept. Okay, later on we can use that concept. So for the time being, after reading the question once, I just assume there are number, there are n number of boys and m number of girls in the class. So if I ask you what is the total number of students in the class, what will be the total students in the class? That would be m plus n or n plus m, whatever is the same thing, right? I can do this now. A very simple logic, as Anime said, the mean weight of 60 students in a class. So they have given you what is the total number of students, right? They have given you the total number of students in the class. That is equal to 60. So can't I frame an equation here? M plus N is equal to 60. I can very easily frame an equation here. And that is M plus N is equal to 60. Okay. Now, the mean weight of 60 students in a class is 40 kg. Children, according to the first sentence, the mean weight of 60 students, or the mean weight of 60 students, that means sigma xi divided by 60 is equal to how much? 40. Makes sense. Isn't it? Sigma xi, that means the sum of the weight of all the students divided by the number of students is equal to 40. So from here, I can say sigma xi, that means the sum of all the, sum of the weight of all the 60 students will be equal to how much? 2,400 kgs, isn't it? 2,400 kgs, okay. Now let's read the next part of the question. The mean weight of boys is 50 kg. The mean weight of boys is 40 kg. Children, how many boys are there? We just assume that the number of boys is equal to n. So the mean weight of n boys, that means sigma xi of boys divided by n is equal to how much? 50. You all know how I got this. The sum of the weight of all the boys in the class divided by the number of boys, which is n, is equal to 50. So children, can't I say, if I take the sum of the weight of all the boys, if I take the sum of the weight of all the boys, that would be equal to n multiplied by 50, which is equal to 50n. 
So you just need to remember one concept. The sum of all the observations divided by the number of observations is equal to the average. Okay, I'm not using any new formula here. Now, the second part, they are telling you that the average of, while that of girls is 30 kg, okay. So how will you find the average weight of girls? That would be sigma xi or the sum of the weight of all the girls in the class divided by what was the number of girls? We had taken it as M. That would be equal to how much? 30 kgs. So if I ask you what would be sigma xi of girls or the sum of the weight of all the girls present in the class, it would be equal to M into 30 or 30 M. Isn't it? So children, from here you got sigma xi, the sum of the weight of all the boys is 50N and the sum of the weight of all the girls is equal to 30N. Make sense, Aaron? Animesh, the sum of the weight of all the boys is 50N, 50N and the sum of the weight of all the girls is 30N. So far everything is fine. Okay. Now, listen to this very important part, Chavin, a very important part. You already knew that sigma xi of all students, children, sigma xi of all students, what is the meaning of sigma xi of all students? The sum of the weight of all the students present in the class, which includes boys as well as girls, is equal to 2,400 kg. Isn't it? Now, children, in a different day or a different angle, I will ask you this question. How can you create a new equation based on this concept? The sum of the weight of all the students in the class is 2,400. Can't I indirectly say or can't I frame the sentence like this? The sum of the weight of all the boys in the class and all the girls in the class is equal to 2,400. Do you agree with that? The sum of the weight of all the boys and all the girls in the class is equal to 2,400, isn't it? So children, can't I write this sigma xi for boys plus sigma xi for girls? Sigma xi for girls is equal to how much? 2,400. Sigma xi of boys is how much? We have found the value 50n, isn't it? 50 and put the plus sign. Sigma xi of all the girls is how much? 30 m. And that is equal to 2400. Okay, you got another equation, children. Now, if you notice, there is some common factor between these three values. There is some common factor between these three values 50, 30, and 2400. Can somebody tell me what is a common factor? between 50, 30, and 2,400. 10. 10 is a common factor, isn't it? Very good. Very good, children. So what I'll do is, I will take that 10 as a common factor out. So 10 into 5n plus 10 into 3m. It's the same thing, no? If you open the bracket again, you will get back the same old thing, 50n plus 30m. Just that I have taken 10 as a common factor out, which is equal to 2,400. Now, in the next step, I can just bring this 10 from left-hand side to the right-hand side. Terence, did you follow this particular step? Yes, sir. So, it becomes 2,400 divided by 10 because you are bringing the 10 to the right-hand side denominator, right? Denominator. So, in the next step, what will happen? 0, 0 will get cancelled and you are left with 5n plus 3m is equal to 240. And this is your second equation. Children, it's a pure case of simultaneous linear equation. If you notice, m plus n is equal to how much? 60. This was the first equation. And then 5n plus 3m is equal to 240. That is your second equation. I'll do one thing. I'll just write both the equations one after the other. The first equation is what? m plus n is equal to 60. The second equation is what? 5n plus 3m is equal to 240. These are the two equations. Now, children, 
we have to solve these two simultaneous linear equations. We have learned two methods. One is substitution method, and the other one is equating the coefficient method. But as Anime said in the morning, sorry, in the in the beginning, if m plus m is equal to 60, can't I say m is equal to 60 minus n? Yes. From equation number one, m plus n is equal to 60, so it implies m is equal to 60 minus n. Let's substitute the value of m. Let's substitute m as 60 minus n in equation number two. Okay, so you get 5n plus 3m is equal to 240. Therefore, 5n plus 3 into 60 minus n is equal to 240. Now, 5n plus 3 into 60 is what? 180. 3 into minus n is what? Minus 3n, which is equal to 240. Very simple, children. 5n minus 3n is what? It's 2n plus 180, which is equal to 240. Therefore, 2n is equal to 240 minus 180. 2n is equal to 60. It implies n is equal to 30. So, anyways, your answer was absolutely correct. Okay, n is equal to 30. So, obviously, m will also be what? 60 minus 30, which is again equal to a 30. Am I right, children? Aaron, is it clear? An animation? You also solve it by using this method? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, very good. What about Aaron? Sir, I didn't get it. Okay, now you followed it? Yes, sir. Okay, I just practice this particular sum once again on your own. Okay, after today's session. Yeah, there is nothing more, children. The rest of the sums are very easy. Okay, shall we start with Pythagoras theorem? No, we can just start with the first exercise, no? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, can we directly start with the second exercise? Because the first yes. exercise is very easy. What about the other students? They may find it a little difficult, no? Sir, yes, sir, it's fine. It's fine for you. I don't have any problem. It's what you say, what your demands are. Uh, what about Terence? Terence say you know what how to solve the first exercise? Sir, yeah. Terence say you know? Sir, by the same. Yeah. Come again. Yes, sir, I know how to solve the first exercise, sir. You know how to do it. Okay. And in your school, did they do uh, the second exercise? Sir, I don't think so, sir. Ah, because most of the schools are, you know, skipping it. Uh, children, before we start solving this sum, uh, just for my happiness or satisfaction, whatever, <laughs> let us just uh, revise what is Pythagoras theorem and the formula which comes out of it. I hope you all know Pythagoras theorem is based on right angle triangles, isn't it? Pythagoras theorem is always based on right angle triangles. If there is no right angle triangle, that means there is no Pythagoras theorem out of it. Okay. Now, imagine ABC is a right angle triangle where angle B is equal to 90 degrees. Huh? Where angle B is equal to 90 degrees. AC, or the side which is opposite to the 90 degree angle, is always known as what? The hypotenuse. Is always known as what? the hypotenuse and in a right angle triangle the hypotenuse happens to be the longest side in the triangle okay now the side with the help of which the triangle sits or it is placed on the floor that is usually known as what the base okay that is known as the base and the corresponding 90 degree line which you draw here the corresponding 90 degree line which you draw here or the perpendicular line which you draw here, the corresponding perpendicular line which you draw to the base BC, that is known as what? Altitude. You can call it as altitude or else you can call it as height. Okay. Both 
have the same meaning. You either call it as altitude or you call it as height. Some children also call it as what you know, perpendicular. Okay, that is also accepted. Some children also call height or altitude as what? Perpendicular. There is nothing wrong in doing so. All right. Now, in such a scenario, if you want to state what is Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse. In this figure, AC is the hypotenuse. So the square of the hypotenuse will be equal to the square of the sum of the height and its base. Sum of the square of its height and its base. So children, this is your Pythagoras theorem. AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square. Okay, kindly make a note of this children. I want everybody to draw this figure. Huh? Label all the three sides of this right angle triangle and then write down Pythagoras theorem. The given figure shows a quadrilateral ABCD in which AD is 13, DC is 12, BC is 3, and angle ABD is equal to BCD is equal to 90 degree. They are just telling you that there are two right angle triangles. That's all, children. They are just telling you that there are two right angle triangles by giving the statement angle ABD is equal to angle BCD is equal to 90 degrees. That's the only message they want to give us. Okay. Now see, this is the figure. If you notice, children, it is a combination of, it is a combination of two right angle triangles. Did you notice this? This is your right angle triangle ABD, where angle B is 90 degree. AD is how much? 13 centimeters. Then, um, anything else in this triangle? No. But children, they have given you one more right angle triangle. See this? This is the other right angle triangle. This is D, this is B, and this is C. Okay. Triangle DCB, where angle C is equal to 90 degree. Now, let's go back to the question. DC is equal to 12 centimeter. This part, children. DC is equal to 12 centimeters. Then uh, BC is equal to how much? Three centimeters. Then nothing else is given, no? Yeah. So what they were asking us to find? Find the length of AB. All right. So whatever data was given to us that we have already highlighted on the given figure. Just that I have divided the original figure into two separate figures. One is right angle triangle ABD and the second one is right angle triangle DCB. That's all. Okay. Children, now tell me one thing. Can't we apply Pythagoras theorem on the second triangle DCB? We can apply Pythagoras theorem on the second triangle DCB, if you notice. Why? Because this angle is 90 degrees. So the corresponding base, sorry, the base and the corresponding height is already given to us. Did you notice that? The base and the corresponding height is already given to us. So isn't it easy to find what is the value of DB? It is easy. Children, according to Pythagoras theorem, DB square should be what? I mean, the square of the hypotenuse should be what? It should be equal to the sum of the square of the base and its corresponding height, isn't it? So the square of the base means BC square plus square of the height means what? DC square. Got it? Pythagoras theorem is ready in front of you. Now, children, DB square will be equal to how much? BC is 3, so it is 3 square. Plus BC is 12, so it is 12 square. So this is equal to 3 square, which is 9, and 12 square, which is 144. Now 9 plus 144 is what? 153. Isn't it? So DB square is equal to 153. Now you all must be thinking 
then why I did not find the value of DB rather than doing, sorry, why I didn't find the value of DB and I found the value of DB squared. So there is a reason behind it. I am not asked to find the value of DB, isn't it? I am not asked to find the value of DB, not this DB. I am asked to find the value of AB. This is what I have to find, okay? Now, AB, if you look into this figure, you will get an idea. AB is one of the sides of right angle triangle ABD. Isn't it? AB is one of the sides of right angle triangle ABD. But in the first triangle DCB, I wasn't having that side AB in it. Okay, so the right angle triangle which I should be using, so in the right angle triangle which I should be using here to get the value of AB should be what? Right angle triangle ABD. Okay, now, if you have to find AB by using Pythagoras theorem, at least two of the sides should be given to you, isn't it? Children, in a right angle triangle, if you are asked to find an unknown side, imagine this is the side which you have to find. Huh? These two sides should be compulsorily given to you. Otherwise, you won't be able to find the third side, isn't it? So please do keep this concept in your mind. Unless they don't give you two of the sides, you cannot find the third side in a right angle triangle. That too by using Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so here you know what? What is missing? Here, what is missing is DB. What is missing is DB. So let us find what is DB. Children, let me ask you something. DB square is equal to 153, you already got, isn't it? Now, for the second right angle triangle, I repeat, sorry, for the first right angle triangle, ABD. For the first right angle triangle, ABD, you already know how much is AD. It is 13 centimeter. AD is what? 13 centimeter. You already know what is DB square. How much it is? 153. All right. So I'll just keep this idea in my mind. DB square is equal to 153. What is the value which we need to find? We need to find AB. Now, children, listen to this. According to Pythagoras theorem, don't you feel AD square will be equal to the sum of the squares of the base and its corresponding height? Yes. So I can write this as DB square plus AB square. I'm just applying Pythagoras theorem over here. Okay. I'm just applying Pythagoras theorem on triangle ABD. So I got this equation. How much is AD? 13. So AD square will be 13 square. I don't know what is the value of DB, but I know what the value of DB square is. How much it is? Hello, children, 153. Can't I directly replace it over here? 153? Yes. So what I'm trying to say is, rather than first finding DB, and then again coming back to DB square, why can't you do it directly? Isn't it? Whatever answer you got for db square over here, whatever answer you got for db square over here, just keep it like that. Don't find the value of db by doing square root of 153. Okay, it will get complicated. Just keep db square as 153 itself because you're going to substitute the same value for db square in the second equation. Aaron, animation Terence, is it clear? Yes, sir. All right. Now let us solve this. 13 square is what? 169, which is equal to 153 plus AB square. If I bring this 153 from the right to the left, it becomes 169 minus 153, which is equal to AB square. 169 minus 153 is what? 16. 16 is equal to AB square. So this implies AB is equal to square root 16. No, don't write square root 16. Directly you write four centimeters. Oh, children, the sum is done. Okay. Very good, Advait Animesh. Advait, you reached home?
Okay, yeah. Yeah. So we'll do one more. Namrata, Dikshit, any doubt, please ask. Otherwise, we can move ahead. And they will ask you these type of sums in the exam also. You see. Uh, let's do this sum. Question number six. You want to give it a try? I'll give it a try. Uh, I'm struggling a bit, sir. One second, sir. AC is equal to 3 centimeters. Calculate the length of OC. I'll just assume OC is equal to X. Okay. OC is equal to X. Uh, now, so we'll do one thing. We will divide this original figure into two separate figures. One, a bigger one and the other one is a smaller one. Okay. So Dikshit has solved it. Yeah. Dikshit has already solved it. So, I'll do it. Uh, this is the first or the big right angle triangle which is AOB which is A, O, B, where this angle is equal to 90 degrees. A, B is equal to how much? 8 centimeter. O, C is equal to how much? Sorry, O, B is equal to how much? X plus 6. You all agree with this? A, B is equal to 8 and O, B is equal to X plus 6. Now, children, um, we don't have any idea about O, A. Isn't it? But since we have some clue about the remaining two sides, hmm, why can't we apply Pythagoras theorem over here? Isn't it? When two of the sides are already given to you, you can definitely apply Pythagoras theorem over it. Okay. And I'm going to do that. So I'll be getting square of the hypotenuse, which is AB square is equal to square of the height plus square of the base. So, AO square plus OB square. Now, AB's value was given to us. It's 8. So, it becomes 8 square, which is equal to AO square plus OB is how much? X plus 6. So, X plus 6, the whole square. If you have a chance of simplification, if you have a chance of simplification, please do it, children. All right. So, here... 8 square is 64, which is equal to AO square plus. Now, what is X plus 6 the whole square? It is A plus B the whole square format, which will be X square plus 2 into X into 6, which is 12X plus. 6 square is what? 36. Right? Now, what I can do next is I can just bring this 36 from the right to the left. It becomes 64 is equal to AO square plus X square plus 12X. Sorry, minus 36. No, I forgot to write that. I'll write it here, minus 36. Now, what is 64 minus 36? 64 minus 36. It is equal to how much? 28? 28, no? Yeah. 28 is equal to AO square plus x square plus 12x. This is what I get. Now, I cannot do anything more on this. So what I'll do is, I'll just keep this inside a box. As and when required, I'll be utilizing this. 
okay i repeat as and when required i'll be utilizing this till then let it take rest for a while okay till then let, let it take some rest now let's take the second right angle triangle the second right angle triangle is what triangle aoc right this triangle aoc i'll draw that triangle here triangle a o c where this angle is equal to 90 degrees how much was ac it is still the same 8 oc is what x ao we have no clue about it but still we can apply pythagoras theorem on this triangle right we can still apply pythagoras theorem on this very good animesh i think the answer is right so when you apply pythagoras theorem you get ac square is equal to ao square Plus OC. Ah uh, yes, Aaron. So AC is three uh, circle. AC is three. अच्छा वाह. Okay okay. Then I'll make changes here. A. Oh sorry. AC is three. Okay. <clears throat> AC is three. So I'll write here three square, which is equal to AO square. Plus OC is what x, so x square. Okay. Now they were asking us to find what the value of x. This is what we have to find. If you notice, children, we have got one more equation, which is nine is equal to a o square plus x square. Nine is equal to what? A o square plus x square. And this is what equation number two. Okay. Nine is equal to a o square plus x square. And this is equation number two. Now, children, they are asking us to find the value of x. What we can do is see in the first equation. I want everybody's eyes to be glued on the first equation. What is the first equation? Twenty-eight is equal to a o square plus x square plus twelve x. I'll repeat it. Twenty-eight is equal to a o square plus x square plus twelve x. But what is the value of a o square plus x square plus Sorry, a, a o square plus x square. What is the value of it? It is equal to nine. And from where did we get that? From equation number two. So children, can't I substitute a o square plus x square as nine in equation number one? Can't I do this? I can do this, right? So children, equation number one was twenty-eight. Is equal to a o square plus x square plus twelve x. Now, what is the value of a o square plus x square? It is nine. So I'll be replacing it with nine over here. And sorry, nine plus twelve x. Okay. Now let me bring this nine from the right to the left hand side. It becomes twenty eight minus nine, which is equal to twelve x. Twenty-eight minus nine is what? Nineteen, which is equal to twelve x. Therefore, x is equal to nineteen divided by two, and that is equal to how much? One seven by twelve centimeter. Please don't leave the answer in improper fraction form. Okay, leave the answer in mixed fraction form. Children, whenever you have a unit to be written besides the value. Okay, write the value in mixed fraction, not in improper fraction. Okay, for example, centimeters, kilometers, or liters. Okay, whatever be the unit. Hmm? If you have a unit to be mentioned beside the number, write the number in mixed fraction form. Don't leave it in improper fraction form. Okay. Easy so far. We'll do the next one. Okay, one last sum for the day. Uh, this one is interesting, children. This one is interesting. Advait, you got the answer now. Namrata, did you follow what we did? Namrata, please do writing practice every day. Okay. Huh? Even if you don't do the sums when I'm giving you, it's okay. But. Whatever we are doing in the class, please do repeat it at home, huh? In your own handwriting. That's how you can come up in the subject. All right, children, pay attention. Uh, see this, huh? 
in a triangle abc ab is ab is equal to ac is equal to x two of the sides are equal okay then bc is equal to what 10 cm okay fine area of the triangle is 60 cm square find the value of x acha have they ever mentioned that one of the angles is 90 no right Mm. Can you please check this question in your textbook? Because so it's not. Time, it's not mentioned. Okay. So they have said A B. Sorry. Ah, uh, A is common, no? In both A B and A C. So I'll take. i will take this vertex as a i will take this vertex as a and this as b and this as c so that i can plot it as ab is equal to what ac okay ab is equal to ac now they have asked us to take ab as x and ac as x then bc as what 10 cm and they have mentioned that the area of the triangle is what 60 cm square okay the area of the triangle is what 60 cm square acha okay. children uh, listen to this part huh? what kind of a triangle is this this is an isosceles triangle because two of the sides are what equal and one of the remaining sides is what 10 cm its area is given to you as what 60 cm square isn't it its area is given to you as what 60 cm square how do we find the area of an isosceles triangle i think you all know how to do it hmm? i have taught you this formula b by 4 into square root of 4 a square minus b square you remember area of an isosceles triangle is what B by four into root of four a square minus b square, and this is something which we did very early, like in the month of June or July we had done when online classes were going on. Okay, what is the value of b, children? It is given. The base is given to you as ten. So ten by four into square root of four. What are the two equal sides given to you, children? A stands for what? The equal sides, and b stands for what? The base of the triangle. So here the equal sides are given to you as x. So 4x square minus b square is once again 10. So 10 square, which is equal to 60. Okay. Now, hmm, 10 upon 4. How much is 10 upon 4? 5 upon 2. So you can simplify this as 5 by 2 square root of 4x square minus 10 square is what? 100, and that is equal to 60. Let's bring this five by two from the left side to the right hand side. So what will happen? Square root of four x square minus hundred, which is equal to sixty. When I bring this five by two from the left to the right hand side, it becomes sixty into two upon five. Now five ones are and five into twelve are. Okay. Square root of four x square. Minus hundred, which is equal to what is twelve into two children? It is twenty four. Terence, are you noting it down? Yes, sir. Square root of four x square minus hundred is equal to twenty four. Now, children, who is the villain in this sum? Square root is the villain, isn't it? Now, uh, who is the villain in this sum? Square root is the villain. And how do we eliminate the villain? Just by squaring both the sides, isn't it? So when you square both the sides. Like this, huh? Sorry. Square root of four x square minus hundred square is equal to twenty four square. Okay, I'm just squaring both the sides. So the left hand side will get again simplified. Now that is the purpose behind squaring both the sides. What will happen? The square and square root will get eliminated. Huh? We have learned this concept in laws of indices. In class eight, we had learned, and even in class nine, the chapter indices we had learned why square and square root sign gets eliminated. 
So 4 x square minus 100 is equal to 24 square, which is 576. Now 4 x square is equal to 576 minus 100 goes to the right, it becomes plus 100. Therefore, 4 x square is equal to 676. Therefore, x square is equal to 676 divided by 4. Therefore, x square is equal to 676 upon 4 is what? 1. Uh, how much it is? 169. 169. 169. So if x square is 169, x will be how much? 13 centimeters. Right? X is equal to 13 centimeters. Over children. That's it. Very good, Advaita Himesh. Okay. But in fact, this question was not based on an on, on a right angle triangle. This was based on an isosceles triangle where two sides are equal. Anyways, this is the benefit of learning the formulas. Instantly, you can solve some. Right? Okay. So, enough for the day, children. We will be meeting on Tuesday. And on Tuesday, we will be doing two more sums from the first exercise. And then we will start the second exercise. All right. Just two more sums, something really good, which will be thought provoking. That kind of sum we will select from the first exercise and then second one. All right, children. So shall we wind up? Parent, Diksha, Terence, Advait, Animesh. Advait and Namrata, you're going to attend offline classes next week onwards. Otherwise, I'll not admit you. Uh, tomorrow, do we have classes?